Hey everyone! I get a lot of questions about materials and techniques I use when working with polymer clay. So I'm gonna do my best to answer all those questions and show a bit of what my sculpting process looks like. All the products I mention in this video are listed in the description box below. First and foremost, let's talk about polymer clay brands. I find that most clay brands work well, but the ones I use are Fimo, Sculpey 3, and Sculpey Primo. Fimo clay is usually on the firmer side right out of the package, but after conditioning, it's pretty easy to work with. Sculpey 3 is very soft and can be used without conditioning. This is also the clay that I used as a beginner. Primo is a nice balance between the two and is the easiest to use right out of the package. Sculpey 3 is my favorite to use for making fake frosting, but I would recommend using Fimo or Primo for sculpting as they are easier to work with and the clay is more durable. There's a variety of tools that can be used with clay, but here are the ones that I use most often. My craft knife is my most essential tool and I use it every time I work with clay. You can also get longer craft blades, which are helpful for cutting clay on a larger scale. Needle tools are another one that I use a lot. I mainly use them for creating texture on my bread and cake charms. If you don't have a needle tool, you can also use a toothpick or a sewing pin. A paintbrush with hard bristles, or even a new toothbrush, can be used to create texture. I use this technique for the majority of my food charms. Dotting tools can serve many purposes, but I mainly use them to make space for the eyes on my kawaii charms. A clay roller or acrylic roller can be used to roll out clay. Findings can be used to turn your pieces into charms and jewelry. The findings I use most are eye pins or head pins, jump rings, and lobster clasps. I use two main brands of liquid clay. The one I use most often is Translucent Liquid Sculpey. TLS bakes translucent and I use it every time I make clay frosting or icing. I also love to use it as a glue when building onto charms. The second liquid clay is Fimo Liquid. This works just as well as TLS, but is translucent before and after baking, which can be really helpful. Chalk pastels can be brushed onto clay, or even shaved down and mixed into clay for added color. If you don't have chalk pastels, you can use eyeshadow instead. I use chalk pastels to make my food pieces look baked, and I do this by brushing the pastels onto my clay using a paintbrush or an eyeshadow brush. It's best to add pastels before baking your clay, but they can also be added afterwards. There are three main types of glaze that I use. The first is Sculpey Satin Glaze. This glaze isn't too shiny, and I love using it for my food charms, especially to seal in chalk pastel shading. The second is Sculpey Gloss Glaze. This works just like the last one, but is much shinier. I use this glaze for the majority of my charms. And the last is UV Resin, which provides structure and a really nice shine. You can also use epoxy, but it will take a little bit longer to cure. I use Easy Mold Putty for all the molds that I make. 
It's very simple to use and the molds pick up detail very well. The molds are also oven safe so the clay can be baked directly inside of them. Polymer clay cutters and tiny cookie cutters are really helpful for cutting out perfect shapes. Another great way to create texture is to take a piece of aluminum foil and roll it into a ball. Then roll this piece over your clay. I mainly use this for cookies, but it can work for so many other food charms. Blending tools can be used to smooth out layers and to create extra structure. It's also possible to blend clay using the side of a needle tool or ball tools. You can use a feather wire tool for texture and scratching. To make a perfect frosting swirl or soft serve ice cream, push clay through a frosting tip using the end of one of your tools. Cut off a piece and slightly twist the rope of clay, then shape it into a swirl. Lastly, jeweler's pliers can be used to cut and alter findings for charms. Most craft stores have clay supplies, but you can also get supplies online through sites like Amazon. I've even seen clay supplies in Walmart before, which can also be a really good option. If you don't want to buy many different blocks of clay when you're first starting, I'd recommend getting Sculpey or Fimo sampler packs. They aren't too pricey and you get to try out many different colors and test out the brands to see which clay works best for you. You can also just buy regular blocks of clay in the primary colors and in black and white. Then you can mix more colors using them. As for tools, that really depends on what kind of sculpting you want to do. When starting, some kind of craft knife would be the only thing you really need, and even that isn't actually necessary. Personally, I prefer getting colored clay, but you can also color it yourself. Neither is better than the other, it's all just a matter of preference. You can create your own colors by mixing shaved down chalk pastels and white clay, which you can even buy in large blocks. Or you could always just paint over your clay, but this method can be a bit more difficult. When I first started clay, I always worked on top of a piece of wax paper or parchment paper. This way you don't mess up your surface and you can easily replace the paper so your surface and charms are more easily free from dust and other colors of clay. For the last couple of years, I've been working on a piece of glass because it's easy to clean and it's also a really nice smooth surface. You can get these by buying a glass replacement for a frame or by getting a cheap picture frame with removable glass. I've never tried working on a ceramic tile, but I've heard of many clay artists who love them. You can even bake your clay directly on top of them because they're oven safe. Dust is something inevitable when it comes to clay, but you can do your best to prevent it by washing your hands in between sculpting. I like to keep a bottle of hand sanitizer on my desk so I can make sure my hands are as clean as possible while working. Make sure to also wipe down your surface and tools, especially before you start working. Another thing you can do is get an air purifier and have that near your surface. Air purifiers filter the air and can minimize a lot of that pesky dust. Even while following all those tips, some dust may still get into your clay. The easiest way to remove it is to take a Q-tip and dip it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol or acetone. Then rub this over your clay and the dust should come off. 
If you've already baked your clay and there's some dust on the surface, just take a piece of sandpaper and file where the dust is. This won't work for texture charms or shaded pieces, but will work really great for smooth charms, especially if you add glaze after sanding. If your clay is too soft, you can fix it a couple of ways. The easiest way is to simply put your clay in the freezer until it's easier to work with. However, this only hardens the clay for a short period of time. Another method is to mix your soft clay with some translucent clay. I usually use Primo. This makes the clay much easier to work with, and as long as you don't add a very large amount of translucent, the color will stay the same. The last way is to leach your clay. Take your clay and flatten it very thinly between two sheets of paper. Leave this for a couple of hours or preferably overnight. You can even place something heavy like a book on top of it to make the process go by quicker. A bunch of extra oil in the clay will soak into the paper, leaving your polymer clay much easier to work with. If your clay is too hard, you can soften it by using clay softener, baby oil, or water. I usually just add a couple drops of baby oil and mix it into the clay until it becomes easier to work with. You can also use water to soften clay. This will work for most brands of clay, except for Sculpey as it is waterproof. The more you add, the softer and stickier the clay will become. If you want to make icing but don't have liquid clay, you can use small amounts of water or oil instead. Again, water won't work on Sculpey clay, so only oil will work. However, because Sculpey clay tends to be softer, especially Sculpey 3, just be careful not to add too much oil as your icing won't bake very well and will end up being very brittle. To ensure eye pins don't fall out, bend the end of the pin before pushing it into your clay. Eye screws can be screwed into the clay before baking. To make sure it will stay in place, I'd recommend super gluing it in after baking. Insert head pins from the bottom of your piece and after baking, use needle nose pliers to bend the top of the pin into a loop. Instead of throwing away clay scraps, I throw them all in a plastic bag. I then use this clay when making pieces that I want to make a mold out of. Every brand of clay has their own baking times and temperatures, which are listed on the clay package. As long as you bake the clay at the right temperature, it should never burn. Pre-baking is baking your clay for a short period of time so that it isn't workable anymore, but still not baked all the way through. Because polymer clay doesn't burn, you can keep the clay in the oven for however long you need. This means you can pre-bake charms as many times as you need to. Sometimes when I'm working on a really intricate piece, I'll bake it multiple times before I continue adding on details so that I don't ruin anything I've already sculpted. Pre-baking times depend on the size of your charm, but I usually pre-bake pieces for around 10 to 15 minutes. I'd recommend starting by making things you like or feel inspired by. This can be animals, food, characters, literally anything. I've tried sculpting lots of different things, but food charms are what I enjoy making the most, and that's what I started focusing on. 
Just like anything else, clay is a process and the more you practice, the better you'll get. So don't get discouraged by your first clay pieces. I hope this video helps out a bit. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask away in the comments and I'll do my best to respond to as many of them as possible. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.